my name is Ashley Malloy and welcome to The Fire and the Whistle, the show that covers UConn sports news in the books, leagues and competitions. And this week in the studio, I'm joined by sports journalism students Alan Martin and Christopher Kynock. Thanks very much guys for joining us, it's always good to have extra sports journalism students in the studio. No Thank problem. you. To start with, here are the men's football first highlights when they took on Manchester seconds. Matthew Hill reports. UCLan came storming out of the traps in their game with Manchester first, as striker Brian Mubana drilled in a low cross with less than a minute on the clock. The home side took little time in making it two, when Mubana's strike partner Zama nodded in a near post corner after 15 minutes. The third goal did eventually come, however, with great work down the right-hand side between Mubana and Zama. The latter's shot was parried into the path of Mark Johnson, who made no mistake from six yards. 35 minutes gone and it was four when Andy McCready was given far too much room in the box and nodded home from six yards. And moments later, Manchester's calamitous corner defending was rounded off as the keeper came to grab the ball and dropped it in his own net to make it 5-0 at the interval. After the interval, Manchester did pull one goal back, but it proved to be a mere consolation as UConn kept up the pressure. And the sixth goal did come when Mubana's lung-bursting run resulted in a foul by the Manchester goalkeeper. The penalty was coolly converted by Mark Johnson for his second of the game and UCLan's sixth. And that was how it finished, UCLan running out 6-1 victors over Manchester seconds. So it was a terrific victory there. Can they go all the way this season, guys? Yeah, definitely. There's, you know, there's no reason why they can't. They're, they're the team to beat, they sit on top of the table. Um, they've only had one defeat. Um, but they've, they've got a big game next week against Liverpool. They're only one point clear of them, so uh, it's a, it's a must-win game next week. Mm. Yeah, it is a must-win game. You know, um, Liverpool just sit just behind with a with game in hand. Um, but if, if recent form is to go by, then Newclan are going to be very confident, especially after that win um, on Wednesday. And they're, they're firing on all cylinders as well. You know, they've got a plus 27 goal difference. So as long as they can go into every game thinking that they can outscore their opponent, then they've got a good chance, I yeah. think. As for the women's first football team, they suffered a 3 1 defeat against Manchester First. So it's again, we're back, we're back again with the same kind of mentality. It's not being great, has it? This it's, season? it's not, no. And, you know, we talked about it at the start of the season as well. That coming from last season where they won nine games out of nine and confidence was high, and it's kind of just not gone that way this year. But it's not all doom and gloom yet. They've, you know, they're in the relegation zone just now, but they've got John Moore's next week. Um, if they beat them, they're on level of points with John Moore, so there's still a lot to play for. There's still for. an opportunity there to, to get themselves back in back co with confidence, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's like Alan said, you know, they've got three games left. Um, they, they shouldn't be, uh, be downbeat, you know, they mm. need to go into the games with confidence and believe that they can win them and, you mm. know, finish on a high near the end of the season. Yeah, best of luck to them as well. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It'd be nice to come back and actually report on a win, you know, yeah, it'd definitely. be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now, next up on the show, we have our exclusive interview with local freestyle footballer Chris Draper. Interest from freestyle first came around when I was doing PR work for Dunfermline Athletic because I got the chance to meet a guy called Graham Lightbody who was known as Scotland's Keep Yuppie King. He showed me a few things and it sparked a small interest for me to go and try different things but when I was in Manchester I met John Farnworth who at the time was known as the world champion which was a quite a big inspiration for me at the time due to the fact that I I wanted to better myself and eventually, hopefully, beat him. Performing around the world has been a very different experience. I mean, when I performed in America, that's been fantastic because the fans and that like no other. You can get a lot more vocal from them. You can interact a lot more with them, but. They, they take you in as one of their own and they'll support you, which is something I really appreciated. When I was in Prague for the World Championships, it was a great laugh there because everybody around the track were freestylers. So you were actually being shown how much of a family football freestyle is. And I think anyone wanting to get into it has got a great, great future ahead of them. My practice levels vary over the week. I can go from doing half an hour on the street to doing five, six hours and doing a full training session at high intensity. 
really depends on your mood and how much time you've got to dedicate yourself. But I'll make sure every week that I do at least between 10 to 15 hours a week. Best advice for, I have for any up and coming freestylers is to work hard, never give up. And if you do fail something, try and try again because it's the only way you progress. And once you hit that trick, you'll never have a better feeling until you nail the next one. The upcoming performance at Wembley that very nervous and very excited at the same time because there's a lot of pressure for this one. In the future I'm hoping that I'll get an opportunity to perform a half time show at one of the England games at Wembley and another ambition of mine that has come around possibly in the last few months is hopefully to go to the World Cup either next year or in the next 10 or 12 years and perform. It's a fault catching up with Chris Draper. Thank you very much, Chris, for your interview. The skills are amazing, weren't they? It was, it was so great watching. <laughs> Incredible. It's just, it's just nice and refreshing to see something a bit different, isn't it, to the usual love on the side. Yeah, um, and I think that, you know you, you see the kind of things that he's doing as well. There's, uh, you know, that doesn't just happen overnight. There's a, there's a practice mm. that has to, that has to go into it as well. Yeah. How many keep uppies can you guys do? <laughs> um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment there. Yeah. If I made double figures, I think I'd be all right. To be honest. Yeah. Same to be fair. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to have a challenge next show and see how many we can You'll do. Take it yeah, we'll see. You'll probably we'll be, be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? And finally, we move on to the hockey now and bring you highlights of the women's seconds match when they took on Chester seconds. Here's Sam Walker with the action. UConn's seconds last game was a 3-0 victory away at Chester, so hopes were high that they could repeat this at home. But today was not to be their day. UConn's keeper made a poor clearance from a short corner, and with no defenders closing down, the Chester forward had plenty of time to pick her spot. Chester's defence was organised throughout, and New Clan's attack just could not break them down. 1-0 may have been fair, but poor defending gifted Chester a second, leaving New Clan rooted firmly to the bottom of the table. We played good actually, to be fair, we played good, it was quite unfortunate that we, we lost, we were pretty much robbed by Chester, but oh well. So it was very disappointing for New Clan there. But you know, it's not all doom and gloom. They've got a chance to make amends in the next game, though, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. And the fact, though, they won't be happy that the fact that they got beat by a team that's sitting bottom of the league. Um, but they do have two games in hand as well over the majority of the league. So they just need to, you know, brush it off, forget about that defeat, and make sure they get maximum points for those two games in hand. No, it's like Alan said. You know, it's a game they should have won, but they can't go into next week thinking of that. They've just got to clear their heads and focus on the task in hand. Yeah. And it wasn't great news in our other hockey results either. The women's first were defeated 4-1 by Liverpool seconds. The men's first lost 10-1 against MMU Cheshire. And the men's seconds were beaten 2-0 by Manchester fifths. So it's not been great, a great week for the mm. hockey, has it really? No, it's not been good. But, you know, I have to look at it as well as, you know, the, the women's first were playing Liverpool seconds, who are sitting top of the league. Men's first were playing Man Mets, who are undefeated this season. So... You know, they were playing teams that are have already proven that they're they're going to be tough to beat. So they can't dwell on it. You know, like we said before, there, there's plenty of games left and mm. they just need to pick themselves up. Well, the, the women's firsts aren't doing too badly. They sit fourth in their league, which is um, which is pretty good. Um, but the the men aren't doing as well. Um, and I think they really they just need to forget about what happened last year and just focus on the task mm. focus mm. on the task in hand and kind of pick themselves up and try and avoid relegation. Yeah, let's, let's hope they can do that, yeah. And let's hope yeah. So. <laughs> I must give a quick mention to our American football team, the UConn Rams, who will be looking to get one back against rivals Lancaster on Sunday. Kick-off for that game will be at 3pm. But that's all we have time for now. Thank you once again to Alan and Chris for joining us. It's been a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Ashley Malloy, and that was the final whistle.